Another time I was walking by, I'm like, Eddie, you, you look a little different. You okay today? He's like, I'm a little hungry today. I'm like, when did you last eat? He's like, it's been a while. And I'm like, come on, let's, I'll take you. Hi, I'm Michael Joy. Welcome back to Absolute Joy. We have another long short story. This ties into surviving art school. I used to walk home from school every day. I used to pass in front of the Palmer House on the way to get onto the subway train. And that's where I met Eddie Carson. Eddie Carson was a boxer. Every day I saw him and he was cleaning the windshields of taxis with newspapers. Turned out to be a pretty interesting guy. Let me tell you about him. After so many days of school and walking by this very nice older gentleman, homeless, and I would stop and I would talk to him. He didn't have great, great vision, so I'd have to get real close to him before he'd recognize me. I would say he was in his 80s, how he looked, and he had kind of, you know, those arthritic hands that were this way, and his whole day was spent as the taxis in those days, right, not Uber, were lined up in front of the Palmer House. He would clean the windshields with the newspaper. And so I got to know him and every now and again we'd talk and one day it was really cold and I'm like, Eddie, how you doing today? You okay? He's like, yeah. And he shows me he's got all these layers of newspaper all in him, you know, to stay warm and stuff like this. And I'm like, you need to be somewhere warmer? He's like, no, no, I gotta work. Uh, I'm okay. And another time I was walking by, I'm like, Eddie, you, you look a little different. You okay today? He's like, I'm a little hungry today. I'm like, well, when did you last eat? He's like, it's been a while. I'm like, come on, let's, I'll take you. And there was um, like a Burger King or something nearby. There was another guy near him and he heard me say that too. He goes, can I come with you? I'm an art student. Like I got like $10 between me, right? And I'm like, shit, this other guy wants to eat? Well, he's big, he's a big heavy guy. I'm like, oh no. So we go in and Eddie didn't know what to order, right? It's not like he, he's like, you know, whatever. He points at some pictures and we sit down to eat and he takes a bite and he's just like, no, I'm sorry, I can't eat this. He said, it just doesn't agree with me. Oh, I didn't know, you know, um, didn't know if he's allergic to pickles or whatever, but the other guy was like, are you finished with that? You know? And I'm like, Eddie, I don't know how else to help you tonight. He's like, Mike, it's okay. It's no problem. Thanks. Thanks for dinner. And you know, we sat and we chatted and stuff. And that's when he told me he used to be a boxer. He said, there was a day when I would walk around and I felt like a man. He said, I have $100 in my pocket and I was strong, capable, and it just was a wonderful time in my life. Sorry to say I don't recall the what happened in between. He didn't really talk about it. Something happens in families like that where one person dies and the stability of the family structure is broken. Fast forward to another day and I'm like, Eddie, I'm like, it's too cold for you out here. I said, why don't you come home with me tonight? And he's like, where do you live? And I said, it's just a short train ride. And he said, that would be great. So at the time I had a studio, we come home and I'm like, Eddie, I said, go ahead and, you know, get cleaned up. It's probably been a while. The guy took a shower like for an hour. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and the apartment you have to understand was like so small. It was as wide as the futon that I had. And that futon I had to bring home on the bus. The bus driver, I remember trying to carry the futon mattress on the bus and I get on the bus and the driver's like, really? I'm like, what do I do? He's like, call a cab. Try to buy your bedding and take it home on the public transportation, it didn't work. Anyways, the studio apartment was like that wide. And then there was a closet and there was a bathroom. There was another closet and you open it and it's a kitchen from like 1930s. I had a little sink and a little stove. I had one bank of windows. And I was happy because I'm like, I got my own studio apartment in college. Are you kidding me? Eddie gets out of the shower and I said, how do you feel? And he says, he said, Michael, I feel human again. Thank you. And I thought, you know, one shower away, one thing away from being human and dehumanized. Just this morning, I was talking to my sister on the phone and we were talking about, there's some people that go and cut grass for free and they save these yards that are like jungles and then the homeowner's elderly and, and it's like it's reborn. And then there's other videos where uh, barbers have someone that's homeless and it's just everything's askew and then by the time they're done with the haircut you see the human again it's no longer a homeless person it's a guy or a girl or you know so it it's no longer identified by some sort of wealth judgment Yeti, you're gonna have to sleep on the floor i don't he goes he's like oh my god it's not new to me so i gave him some pillows and stuff what i had and we got up early the next morning and he was like i feel really good he says it's snowing outside it's a hard winter day he said but i feel really good and i was just it was so touching you know i didn't but not a lot of 19 year old college art school kids were having a homeless guy come over but i had had much time with him and it felt more like somebody that was a part of my routine and my rhythm. And I went home for Christmas break and I would see Eddie, I didn't see Eddie, I didn't see Eddie. And I asked the doorman at the, in front of the Palmer house. I'm like, I'm like, where's Eddie? And he's like, I don't know. I haven't seen him in a long time. I thought he died, this, that, and the other. 
And it turned out that he had just moved to another location to do the cars there and he came back, but he did die shortly after that. And I just thought, years on the street has gotta be like, one year has gotta be like 12. I had no agenda. I just thought this guy's cold, you know, and my apartment's not great, but it's something. So it was only one day. So Eddie, wherever he is, I don't have a moral of the story. It's just a, a kid and an old guy.